there is a lot to consider when it does come to baby safety. And I know many of you have had a lot of concerns um, recently about safety and you know what other people are doing in their studios. And I mean, let's face it, like the safety of a baby is the most important thing when it comes to doing what we do. Um, but it's also being able to create an incredible, memorable um, experience for your clients. Like we got to, we've got to remember that we are offering a product and service in exchange for payment. So our clients, they come first. Their needs, their wants, everything, um, you know, has to be at the forefront of what we do, including that baby safety. So I'm going to cover a lot of things here. Um, I know that a lot of people have contacted me, I've read messages, I've seen comments in the group asking me, you know, what can I do? And the thing is, I can't do anything about how another photographer operates in their studio. That's, it's, it's out of my control. Um, we are an unregulated industry. We don't have, you know, um, places that we can go to for information. Like it's, it's very, very difficult for someone like me to, to police how other people operate and work in their studio. And I mean, it's nothing that, uh, all I can do is make sure that the information that I put out there helps people understand why it's so important to be safe when working with people's babies. I've got some really amazing guests that are joining me today um, and they've, they've brought their baby in, which I'm gonna be photographing after this live. And I think that the most important thing that I can share with you today is the why. Why are we being hired? And you know, what can we do to create that incredible client experience and to keep their baby safe at all times? So that's why I wanted to open this discussion up because I think we need to bring the focus back to our own actions. When we get caught up with what other people are doing on the internet, um, in their own studios, in other countries that we don't even live in, when we focus all of our energy and attention on that, then we start to take our focus away from our priority when we are business owners, which is focusing on our business focusing on getting our clients in the studio, focusing on creating an exceptional experience. And I'm gonna to continue to repeat those words, exceptional client experience, because it is so, so important. Um, but yeah, I wanted to create, I suppose, um, you know, a live around what it is that we do and why it's so important to our parents. So they're just feeding their baby at the moment and they're gonna come in and join me shortly. So I'm gonna go on a little bit more about you know, some of the things that we can do. Um, I wanna bring up actually, before they do come in, um, my blog posts. When you do go to newbornposing.com and you click on the blog tab, um, Garrett's gonna share with you in a moment um, a little sort of screenshot there. But when you go to the blog and you, you click on um, the blog, oh sorry, you scroll down and then you're gonna see some little uh, menu buttons, some, some titles, you know, you've got newborn studio, photography, Photoshop, post-production, productivity. There's pretty much blog posts on everything you could imagine, but there is a safety tab. And so what I want to remind everyone there is that there are free safety videos. If you have safety concerns, if you've seen something that someone else was doing and it's created a concern for you, go and watch those free safety videos. They're there for a reason. I just, that's what I mean when I say, I, what I can do to help other photographers is make sure that I encourage everyone to, you know, be operating. Um, safely in their studios and what they do to be able to build that client relationship so that you can build a client base and that word of mouth is going to be really really important so the safety um, blogs there in um, sort of video sorry then there's creating the perfect environment understanding newborn behavior we're going to talk more about that shortly 
Then there's studio safety tips in terms of your equipment. Like you must make sure that all of your equipment that you have in your studio that you are using is at a, you know, it meets the, the requirements, the national safety requirements. Um, everything that you have from, you know, your tripods to your backdrop stands to everything. I talked a little bit recently in another live about posing bags and creating a setup to photograph a baby on. If you are um, adding your own structures to backdrop stands, to dog beds, to all of those things, from a safety perspective, if you are not a qualified craftsman or um, tradesman to be able to do that and something goes wrong, it breaks, it falls, then you're liable from a safety point of view. So when we are talking about safety, I'm not just talking about the way that you hold and handle a baby, which we'll talk about more shortly. I'm talking about um, all of the equipment, trip hazards, fall hazards. I'm talking about um, the, the equipment obviously meeting those, those standards, but also the hygiene of the space that you're working in, your hygiene as well. I cancelled a shoot last week because I had a cold sore. Um, now that's something to me that I, you know, I, I'm very, very passionate about. I actually have in my terms and conditions a rescheduling um, clause. So if a client is unwell, I do not want them to come to my studio. If they have a toddler that's coming with them and they are unwell, I do not want them in my studio. I don't want them turning up on the day with a child that's got a runny nose, a cough, because then that puts me at risk of becoming sick and then not being able to you know, um, provide a product and service for, for my other clients that have booked. So I always make sure that I you know, I've spoken to them about my different terms and conditions and they're not, it's not just a document that they get to read. I communicate with them, I talk to them on the phone, I email with them, ask them if they have any questions or concerns regarding my terms and conditions, regarding the session. So that's, that's your responsibility as a business owner to make sure that you are doing that. Um, when it comes to the cleaning, you know, coming through a pandemic, you've got to make sure that you are cleaning your space. You know, obviously there are some countries that are a lot more affected than others right now. So allowing, you know, a 24 hour period between each session, making sure every surface is wiped down, um, communicating with your clients again in terms of have they had any symptoms um, and, and asking them. I know when I go somewhere, especially the doctor surgery, you know, do you have any cold and flu symptoms? Have you felt unwell in the last, you know, 24 hours, 48 hours or whatever it is? You have to be doing the same thing when it comes to communicating with your clients because babies have a very um, weak immune system in those first few months and they could be, you know, susceptible to anything and you don't ever want to take that risk because, you know, I've always said precaution is better than the cure. So making sure that you have taken, um, you know, on board all of the, the different things that you could do to prevent anything from happening is, is paramount. But that cleaning checklist is a great, um, great thing as well for you to download. This is my PDF of safety tips. Now you can get this and it's a free download on the blog when you go to the safety videos um, one, which the link's already been shared there by Michelle, which is great. So it's just got 10, 10 of the safety tips, which I'll cover. You know, never leave your baby unattended. Um, make sure when you're set up in front of your posing bag or in a prop that you have everything you need at an arm's length so that you're not getting up and going and getting a hat, getting up and going and getting a, you know, a, a support. It's all there. Get a trolley, start thinking about the way that you can make your working space functionable and safe for a baby to be in. Um, number two, always support the baby's head and neck. So this is actually a really important thing. We forget, you know, when we're, when we're working with babies, We've, we're so focused on getting that shot. We're so focused on getting our lighting right, our exposure right in camera, that we often forget the priority, which is keeping that baby safe at all times. 
the first thing that you will read when you go to any website or blog or whatever it is that you're, you're doing your research on about baby safety and non-photography related websites, the first thing that you read about keeping a baby safe is supporting their head. And the reason is that their neck muscles haven't fully developed, they're not strong enough. That's why a baby can't hold its head up. So I cannot emphasize enough to make sure that that baby's head is supported. Just because you can wrap a baby and put it upright, hands free, doesn't mean that you should. Just because you can do um, the froggy pose and not use a spotter, doesn't mean you should. No shot is worth the risk of a baby becoming injured or um, you know, becoming unsettled either because that it, you know it's it's feeling like it's not secure. And when babies are born, they are born with one fear. That is it, and that is a fear of falling, a fear of insecurity. That's why they have that startle motion. They have nothing nothing else to be afraid of when they're born because they've not learnt about all the dangers that are in the world. So that's why they have that startle reflex and they, they go to cling um, so that they don't fall. That's why it's really important to make them feel comfortable and secure at all times. Um, so when we go through obviously all of these different things, these are just points, but they're great reminders. And Photoshop is a really amazing tool to create composite images and to remove supporting hands. And never, please, ever, 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 for the sake of a shot, force a baby into a pose. If a baby is crying, if it's, um, if it's unsettled, it's, that's its natural way, the only way that it can tell you that something's not right. Babies cry for many different reasons. When you go to the blog and you have a look at that newborn behavior blog post, there's a lot in there about why babies cry. They could be unsettled in terms of a pain. They could um, be hungry. They could be um, wet, dirty in terms of their diaper or nappy. Um, they, they could be cold. They could be hot. They're trying to tell you something, so you've got to follow their cues at all times to make sure that you are being responsive to what they're telling you. And if a baby's crying while you're trying to put it in a pose, move on to the next pose. That's why it's really important to have a workflow when you're working with babies so that you can easily transition from one pose to the next. I teach that in all of my tutorials. My transitional posing focuses on the comfort and the safety of a baby. If it's not comfortable on its tummy, take it back to the side. When you do read safety blogs about newborns and babies and how to handle them and how to care for them as a parent or, you know, just out of interest if you're not a parent, they tell you to put the baby on its back. When you're in the hospital, it gets put on its back. When they put the baby down in the crib, they put it on its back because of SIDS. So there are reasons why I start with a baby on its back and that's for its comfort and that's for its safety. Hi. <laughs> All right. Um, I'll just quickly finish these off and then I'll introduce you to our family. Then always wear a camera strap around your neck when you're shooting from above. I have heard terrible stories about people's cameras hitting a baby. And if, you, if you're not using a camera strap, then you, know, you run the risk of dropping your camera and um, that obviously could be very, very um, dangerous because cameras are extremely heavy. And never stand on anything above a baby because, you know, you could trip, you could fall, um, the surface could, you know, might be slippery. For whatever reason, use a wider angle if you need to get higher up. Um, that's another option for you. And always have a spotter when you're using props and things like that. Like I said, baby's neck muscles aren't strong enough. So if you're going to put a baby in a prop upright like this, if it moves, it's not going to have full control of its neck. Always have a supporting hand beside the baby. And you'll see in a lot of my things that I share, the hand is there at the back of the baby's head. And when I go to take the shot, I instruct my spotter to raise that hand and then bring it straight back down. Or I use Photoshop to remove that hand. There's always a way around it. So don't ever risk, you know, getting the perfect shot when it comes to safety. Um, and avoid all falls risks. So don't put a baby in an elevated prop up off the ground. Like I wouldn't put a baby on something this high. 
I would always make sure that they're nice and low and safe to the ground. And that's even falls risks when it comes to having toddlers and adults in your space as well, because, you know, um, having lots of equipment in the, you know, area that you're working in, toddlers can fall over if you've got stairs without a safety gate, um, and they are on your property if they fall, even though it's not your fault in terms of that baby falling, the toddler, you're still responsible because you didn't provide, um, you know, any safety precautions there. <laughs> Okay, I'm getting excited about the baby. Alrighty, um, and never use props that, obviously I love to use antique props, but when I'm shopping for props, I look for the solid structure of that prop. I wanna make sure that it's not gonna break, that it can hold weight. I always make sure that it is nice and strong and it's not going to injure the baby if it comes into contact or anything like that. And then the way that I use my props as well is that I create beautiful supportive um, areas with inside the prop to help keep the baby safe and secure at all times. So don't use glass jars to put a baby in, that's really, really dangerous. And don't use anything that's not strong or sturdy. So make sure that you do your homework and your research there in terms of what props. And of course, the number 10, the last one um, is, you know, getting the shot, it's not worth it download this, blow it up, put it on your studio wall so that parents can see it and so that they know that you are keeping their baby safe at all times. Um, <clears throat> I am talking a lot. <laughs> All right, we have Marina and Jeremy here, and um, I'm very, very lucky to have them come and join me in the studio because it was actually Garrett that met them. Garrett and his partner met them in a dog park. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I sort of put out the invitation and asked them if they'd be willing to come and talk with us about some, you know, some things regarding having their baby photographed because this is their first baby and it's so special. And we were just having a conversation then and I mean, I've got some questions here and it was, it was just really lovely to have that conversation with you because you kind of answered all my questions, but I'm gonna ask them again so that um, you guys can, you know, can understand why I focus so much on client experience and the safety and comfort of a baby at all times. All right, thank you for coming in. All righty. So for you guys, what was the main reason behind wanting to, you know, have photographs? Because you sent me a beautiful email yeah. after Garrett and, and, you know, told you all about what we do here. But why is it so important having your baby photographed? Oh, and there's a microphone right here. Yeah, so... Hold um, it up a little closer. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Perfect. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Yeah, so one reason for us was that, um, yeah, over the past couple of weeks, everything has gone so fast. I mean, uh, Marina had to go to the hospital several times. She had an emergency C-section. Now she's in recovery. Uh, and yeah, we've got this little one that we need to take care of. So there's really a lot of things to learn. And uh, um, yeah, this whole process is, is very, uh, yeah, hectic and very uh, um, time consuming as well and so time flies and we we were really thinking okay we should try to keep like one timeless memory you know of uh, this young age and um, yeah because I think uh, uh, Jamie is gonna love that also later on uh, mm -hmm. to see himself in a certain uh, uh, with a, a certain artistic lens you know yeah uh, yeah so. that's it may I, may I add something like so also mentioned that in my family, we don't take a lot of pictures, right? And now, nowadays, with um, technology, a lot of good pictures, you take pictures kind of all the time, but they are like bad pictures. <laughs> so it's like uh, capturing uh, a very important moment. And I think we're both quite serious people, so we do not really celebrate our life, right? Like doing this these events that really change your life. So I, I think it's really the occasion to just take a snapshot, a, a good one, to share the joy of having, of having our baby, <laughs> Jamie, with us. Yeah, so it's very important. Yeah, it's so true. And your family, there's a lot of your family and friends are overseas. That's right, I'm from Spain and he's from Belgium. So, <laughs> hungry and um, and then that's a, a way to share 
right and and have like nice picture for the grandparents that are in Spain and Belgium respectively. Yeah, and I can imagine that. It, oh, I think I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if you if you want, he's happy. Yeah. Um, you know, and what sort of things like. You know, obviously, Garrett told you a little bit about me as a photographer, but when, and you, you said before that you were looking for a photographer, what sort of things like, in terms of new parents, when you, when you want to book a photographer, what sort of things would you be looking for? Jeremy was mentioning about trust, right? So Garrett and, and his partner talked to us about you and also the, the prices you've received. And like, it's not the first day you are doing this job, right? So as we, you are handing in your baby, you don't want, as you were mentioning, related to safety, something sloppy, something not only that is going to be good at the picture, but as a family, it's going to be a good experience because every time the baby cries, it's a, um, it's a distress. So you want to have like a, a, a nice day, you know, a nice setup taking pictures, that's because he's hungry, but <laughs> we know the cause, but you don't want like, like to put your baby in risk on, and feeling distressed about it and going out like angry or cranky about how did it go. Yeah, exactly. And you know, if I was to hold your baby and not support him properly, if I, I was to be rough with him, like that's obviously, like you said, it's going to make you feel really uncomfortable. That, that's right. That would be a lot of distress. So. It's not go it's wrong. It's not going to be a nice experience, right? You mm. come here for a nice experience to share the joy of having the baby and this important step for us and suddenly like, everything gets disrupted. Yeah. yeah. And right. and that's the thing, if you can pop it down if you want to take him. Yeah. Um oh. So right now he's saying I'm hungry. Yeah. He doesn't want the dummy. He wants his mummy, and this is exactly what we've got to understand. So you mentioned before, Jeremy, you know, you had quite a few trips, Marina, to the hospital leading up. You had to have an emergency C-section. When our clients are coming into the studio, we don't know, unless we ask, what sort of experience that they've had. And having an emergency C-section, I've, I've had one. I know how traumatic it is and it's something that your body and mentally you have to recover from. So when we are working with our clients, empathy is one word that we need to have when we're working with our clients. We've got to empathise the experience that they've just gone through because it is such a beautiful time in their lives. It is a celebration and they want to share it with their friends and family that they can't be with, especially now in a pandemic. It might be 12 months before his grandparents get to meet him face to face and hold him. So the photos we take aren't just to be put on the internet for likes, comments and shares and to become popular and all of that kind of stuff. Our photos are for them. They're photos that go on their walls. They're photos that get shared with your family. Yeah. And that's what they're paying you for. That's the product and service that we provide as business owners. And if you've lost sight of that, I'm gonna say it, you really probably shouldn't be doing it right now. Come back to the reason why you picked up a camera, why you love working with people and what it is that you can provide for them. Stop worrying about what everyone else is doing Stop trying to get a million likes. Stop trying to go viral. It's not about that. The photos we take mean something to the people that are in them. And how we make them feel throughout the client experience, the service that we give them, the way that we listen to their needs, we ask questions, we communicate and we deliver, that's on you. So if you're not getting clients right now, you know, reality check for yourself. What is it that you could do better? What could you change to improve the way that you operate as a business owner? Not just from a safety perspective, but also from a communication, a place of communication, a place of um, you know, marketing, all of those things. Listen to what your clients are saying and then ask yourself, what can you do better? Because that's what it's all about. But for me, my business is successful because my clients have always come first. And then when something hasn't gone right, and I'm telling you, after 17 years of being in business, I've made mistakes. 
I've done things, you know, in terms of um, running my business that I've learned a lot from. So I've made changes to adapt and grow to become successful. But one of the most important things is my clients. You know, I, people ask about marketing, but they're my biggest marketers right there because if they have a bad experience, they're going to go out and they're going to tell people how bad it was. I actually had a baby in yesterday and um, the mum actually said while she was here, he was about eight, eight months old, I believe, maybe a little bit younger, but um, she said the newborn photos were terrible, the experience was horrible. Like she didn't even want to talk about it anymore. So we've got to remember that because that stays with them. I don't know if we've got any questions there, Garrett. I've gone deep. <laughs> I'm, I'm not 100% sure anyone's game to ask any questions because this is a pretty serious sort of topic. Yeah, and I've got, I've got another Opinions are, are one thing, but, um, you know, facts are another. So I think you're That's just right. laying, it, laying it straight today, which is keeping everyone entertained by the looks of it. Nice. <laughs> All right. Um, now, a lot of parents go through prenatal classes when they're pregnant, things like that. Um, obviously, COVID prevented them from being able to attend prenatal classes, but first baby, yeah. you've obviously done some research. Yeah. There you go. What sort of things like, you know, were your concerns in terms of bringing a baby home and what did you want to know? Yeah, so, so I don't know if they, yeah, like we, we read like around four books about going from nutrition to, you know, like all the developmental stages, like this week is, that's happening. And then at the hospital, yeah, mindfulness, etc. And then at the hospital, they teach us a lot about the breastfeeding, also how, how it is important. I read a book about that. And then like now about safety, the important thing was like to respond to the cues immediately, right? So I read that book, well, one book about, we were mentioning how in Western societies, first they were saying, oh, if the baby cries, that's, that's normal. You can let him settle by itself, but that's completely wrong. We were mentioning that Aboriginal kids, people or kids in Africa do not cry. And it's because we've kind of forgotten in the Western society, oh, we need to work. We need, if he cries, do not respond to the cues but you don't want your baby to cry. It's a source of distress. Like now he's fine. He, he's just with my um, breast in his mouth. So you know that he was crying for a reason. And the reasons need to be if he's uh, hungry, if he uh, has dirty nappies and uh, cold. So he's in discomfort for some reason. So we just, we, we just need to, to, to run and tackle that issue. So, and also, what we were mentioning is that the, the next, the, the muscle in the neck, that they are not strong enough, how to spend some time putting down, and all the time where they're like, be careful with the neck. Be careful with the head. Head, go around that. So, so I think that's it. Like, it's now that we've got him, that we are also reading about illnesses, the jaundice that he's got a little bit, and this sort of stuff. And then, yeah when he becomes toddler, all the things that can happen, that can go wrong. So, yeah. That's a fun age, especially yeah. when they start running. <laughs> and that's it. You know, when, when you're becoming a mum, even if you're, or a, or a dad, even if you're not a parent right now, you know, that instinct to care for a baby, to look after a baby is, is natural. But when your baby cries, there's something within you that kicks in that makes you want to go and pick that baby up. That's right. I hear babies cry in the supermarket and I want to go and pick them up. <laughs> I can't, obviously. But we have to remember um, this is someone's world. Yeah. Like this is their world. So how we hold a baby, how we, you know, um, handle a baby. When they cry, it's, it's having an effect on the parents. We might know it's crying because it's tired or whatever it's crying, but you've got to respond to their cues and always be baby led and change the way that you work. Just because you have a workflow that starts with a particular pose and goes into another, um, that's fine, but not every baby is going to do that. They are all so different, just like we're different. Mm -hmm. We're all different. We're all going to, to do things differently. But what, I'm, what I need to really sort of emphasize today is that even though we're different, we all need to be safe. Yeah. 
We need to focus on the safety of a baby, not just for their, their own you know, level of comfort and safety, but for our parents as well, how we make them feel. Um, you know, I remember um, my sister Tracy works here with me now. When, when she had her first baby, I was 14 and the, I still remember her saying, make sure you hold the head when I got to hold my niece for the first time. And those things that like, they don't leave you. So always remember how you are going, how your actions are going to um, cause an, you know, a different level of impact on the people you know, that you're working with. Um, I do have one question from Joanna, and it's regarding, you know, different poses and that sort of thing. So she's talking about the froggy pose in particular. So what would you do if you had a client that wanted the froggy pose, but you're just not feeling comfortable with it? Like, how do you, how do you tell the client? And that's the thing. So from an experienced perspective, obviously I know how to achieve that pose. My go-to all the time when I'm asked for it is, Every ba it is a more complicated pose. It's a, it's a series of um, multiple images then composited together in Photoshop because they often don't realize how the, those photos are created. And I explain to them that not every baby is comfortable going into that pose and it will depend on their baby. But what I always say is that, you know, we'll try it towards the end of the session. Um, after I've got, you know, the, the the majority of, of the images that I need to get for your client gallery, you can say that because that's what they're paying you for and you're being honest and clear about um, you know, the, the process of your shoot. Uh, and that if your baby becomes unsettled or un, you know, uncomfortable and at any time, I'm just gonna move on to another pose. So you have to take control, you've got to guide them. But you know, that's from an experienced point of view. But if you've never attempted that pose before, if you've never done it before, be open and honest again. I'm sorry, that's not a pose that I've actually um, done before. It's not a pose I feel comfortable achieving on my own. And this is where you could, you know, get together with another photographer in your local area that may have done it and you could do it together. They could become your spotter, whatever it is. Um, you know, I've got a tutorial for it as well. but. Just let them know your clients are going to be, you know, more comfortable with you being honest than you trying to fumble your way through quite an advanced setup and not really knowing what you're doing. And when I do it, I often get my parents to help me because they're not going to hurt their baby. They're going to make sure that their baby's safe at all times. But I always make sure that I talk them through the process and I show them what to do. But I don't often get asked for that pose. It's not a pose that I particularly offer, and so I don't share it. It's don't not, put it on your social media if it's not something you do. Not on my website. Yeah. So if you don't want to offer something, don't show it. Don't do it. For years, I thought that to be a newborn photographer, I had to be able to accomplish that pose, and I would almost like wrestle with babies to get them into this position, and they didn't want it. Some babies don't like. Um, you know, sitting that way. Some babies have arched backs, backs naturally, some have rounded backs, some don't like their hands being touched, and some are a little bit more unsettled than others for whatever reason. So it just depends on the baby at the time, but you have to communicate and you have to give your clients the information that they need so that they know what you're doing. That's the thing, having a session workflow, being able to communicate with them, guide them through the shoot. You know, come on in, it's nice and warm in here. You know, I'm gonna go through a series of three to four poses on my posing bag. I'm then gonna move on to a couple of props and then I'm gonna take some beautiful photos of you and your baby. They now know what is going to happen. When? <laughs> and don't worry, I'm gonna allow lots of time for feeding and cuddling. So if your little one becomes hungry, that's fine. We'll just go with whatever they're happy with. This is how I create a client experience that they enjoy and that they remember. I hope you guys have got, you know, something out of this. I wanted to bring it back to client experience because this is what we do. We provide a product and service for our clients. So stop worrying about what everyone else is doing. Yes, there is concern for obviously some people who, you know, don't tend to focus on, you know, some very important safety issues. But as long as we focus on what we're doing and for myself in this group and this community, just encouraging you all to make sure that you are doing the right thing within your business and for your clients and keeping that baby safe at all times. That's what that's 
what my focus is right here in this community. Um, so as long as we're supporting each other and encouraging that, that's what I care about. So anyway, today's live, I'm gonna cut it here because I've got a baby I need to photograph <laughs> and he's super cute. And um, I hope you guys have a great weekend. I will see you back here next Thursday at 10 a.m. for another live. And we'll be sharing some more information um, in Tuesday's email about what the topic will be. But thank you for joining me again. I appreciate how late it is in some parts of the world. Um, but yeah, if you missed some of it, it'll be up on YouTube soon. Take care, bye.